okay okay so guys good evening and in this module we'll see um, the how to solve a map it is job or uh, and the first we are going to understand the map it is job and then how actually mapper and reset task right? mapper and reset task runs and then we'll see we'll take up a couple of problems and see that how can we solve it using the map it is job okay <coughs> Now, if you take up these problems, which you see on the, which you see this problem, uh, it says that uh, down the number of words you are starting with the vowels. Let us say that you don't have any technology, you don't know, you are, a, let's say that you are in a third standard or tenth standard, or you don't know anything. If you give this problem to a uh, kid and ask him to count the number of words you are starting with vowels, provided uh, he understand. Um, first one minute. Uh, what happened? Provided he knows what vowels and everything. Okay. So if you give him this and say him count the number of words are starting the vowel, wherein the output should be output should be a word. Some weird problems happening. We just clear it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. The output should be the word and the count, or it should be a frequency, total number of times the word has appeared. If you see, <coughs> the output should consist of only the words that are starting with vowels and how many times it has appeared. And if you give to that, uh, if you give if you give this problem to a kid, what he will do? How will he do? How will he solve this problem? He will solve. The problem like this he will take or uh, you will take us he will take a single line at a time because you cannot read the multiple lines so you take a single line at a time you start reading the words one by one right and then if the word is starting with a vowel you take up that word and write one to next so write one to write one uh, next to it so you read up this you ignore you see all the words you go one word by word ignore those words just which are not starting with vowels or Ignore those words that are starting with consonants. You take up only those words which are starting with vowels and you say R1. You will ignore, during this process, you will ignore other words and extra special characters like comma, question mark and everything. Then you go and then you read the next line and go to the next word. And then you, whenever you uh, encounter a new word, then you will say I1, am1. And if you encounter the same word which is there in your paper, you will say 1, comma 1. And then once you are done, you add the number of ones to get the final count. For example, you have apple, you have encountered two times. Orange, you have encountered here, let's say two times. Then once you are done, you will just sum it, sum it up. And please mind the steps. Please remember the steps. This is the same way how uh, the MapReduce framework works. So what you have done actually here, it's a mapper phase where you are uh, doing some kind of a um, calculation or a processing and then finally you are aggregating at the reduced phase. Okay, the mapper is the first phase of your map reduce job. As we know, a map reduce job starts with a map task and ends with a reduced task. If anyone asks you, do you can you have a map reduce job with a zero map task? Then the answer should be no. You should have at least one map task. It works typically on a one block of data. In the previous module, I have we have we know that um, the word typically means that you have the flexibility to change the amount of data that each map task is going to process. To change amount of data that each map task is going to process and that's basically you can change the input split size
which will change the number of input splits and that will change the number of map tasks. Now the MapReduce framework always try to ensure that the map task runs closer to the data, right? The map task run closer to the data, the concept which we already know, which is known as data localization. The MapReduce framework always try to ensure the map task runs closer to the data to avoid transfer of data. It is always not possible. You will understand that later. Uh, but you need to understand, yes, it's uh, that the data localization concept is applicable only for the map task. It does not applicable for the reduce task. Again, yeah. Um, now, the very first thing you need to understand regarding the MapReduce framework that the entire MapReduce framework works only on a key value pair. Yep, and please understand you might have known a lot of keys till this time, till all of your life. Uh, you know about the unique key, you know about the primary key, you know about the secondary key, surrogate key, foreign key, by key, star key, there are a lot of keys which you have known. Uh, to understand the MapReduce framework, you should not associate any kind of a meaning. So don't associate any kind of a meaning to the keys. Okay, it's a plain key value pair. A key could be anything, a value is a, a key could be anything, value could be anything, but it's a pair. So for a given key, there is a value. So don't associate any kind of a meaning to that. Now let us understand the map tasks. So this is your, I have taken some lines here to understand it, the same data set. Assuming it's the 120 MB, 64 MB is your uh, block size, the application factor three. So it will, since it is a 120 MB, 64 MB is the block size. Two blocks, it's just a logic, logical replication factor three. You divide into each of the blocks are replicated thrice, and the replicas are distributed across several machines. And this is a scenario. Uh, hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? Apple is orange, orange is apple. And please, I am uh, uh, here. You need to understand uh, that I have not taken the case. One can ask me that uh, we know that the breaking, when the breaking is happening, it's, it's a blind chopping. Right, it never adheres. It never respects whether it's a word boundary or long, uh, whether whether it's a full word or not. It might happen that this apple which you are seeing, the apple which you are seeing here, Um, here, it, this could be a case. So you can have an APP here and LE here. So the MapReduce framework is intelligent enough to recognize these broken words and it will consider this as one word. But that is not the scenario which we are taking right now. When we'll actually do the map, MapReduce uh, problems, uh, then I'll make, then uh, you will understand that how this is handled. No, but the, for the timing, if you really want to understand it, it's a record reader which will handle this broken record. Okay. <coughs> now, uh, so you have a two blocks, two map tasks will be running. Now we know that, and each map task is independent, running on a separate JVM. This and each uh, and each of the map task is processing different blocks of data. Now a map task is associated with a function, is a, is a map task. Every map task is associated with a map method, which receives a single record, okay, from an input split or a block at a time. This is a very uh, complex statement. 
first and the foremost when you are writing a map reduce job uh, when you are writing a map logic that is the map logic these are this task and thing but they are executing some logic so the map logic is always goes into the map method okay which um, mm -hmm. so what does it mean that when you are writing a map method when you are writing a map logic writing map logic you will be writing one map method only you will not write multiple map methods for multiple blocks of data you will be writing only one map method only and that logic and that logic inside the map method will be working across all the blocks of data and that logic inside the map method Okay. Okay. Now, a map. As I've just told you, this is what the statement here is. You need to write only one map method, which will be running across all the blocks of data. Um, so I uh, remember that application will be running. Uh, application. You remember in the very first module, I have introduced that application should run on the machine data is present, and that application is nothing but some kind of a logic. Now you here actually your map logic is working on the blocks of data. Now, uh, if you see the map method, you will see uh, you you actually get a in key and an input key and the input value. As a developer, you will uh, you will process this input key and the input value and generate output key output value. To more uh, to understand this in a clear form, so here you have a map method. Let's say this rectangle blocks represent the map method. The map method receives an input key and the input value you process you write some logic and generate output key and the output value now what is this input key and the input value we need to understand who gives this input key and the input value or uh, from where this input key and the input value is coming up <coughs> so input key and the input value it's a nothing but a record is converted into key value pair and sent to the map function oh so it says that a record is converted to key value pair and sent to the map function so you have a map method just now i have written the diagram it's an input key input value you generate output key and the output value that is different that you process some logic you write it and it says that input key input value is coming from a record is coming from a record my question is then what is a record a record is nothing but one complete line terminated by a new line character but to just to make sure that you understand right now for many of the problem statement the record definition will remain the same which is a one complete line but for a xml data later on the record definition will differ based on the data record definition might differ based on the data for example for xml data it cannot be one line for a binary data again there is no new line character for a json data it will be different because there it's a different kind of data set okay so a record is complete is record is a one complete line terminated by a new line character and each and every record is converted to key value pair and sent to the map function one by one that means to say that the map method will be called for every record one by one a map method will be called for every record one by one for each and every record one by one okay for every record 
it will never ever be called uh, two records at a time. So if a block of data, let's say this is a block of data and if it has a 50 lines, if it has a 50 lines, then the map logic will be called for each of the 50 lines. Now remember you should not maintain the state when you are processing the lines. When you are processing the record of the data, you should not maintain the state. When processing record, you should avoid maintaining the state. I'll explain that later, but just for the time being. For example, you there are three records. Record 1, record 2, record 3. You are processing record 1 and you want to store some variable like say x. In some variable x is equal to 1. When you are processing record 2, you want to increment that uh, 1 plus 1. <coughs> don't do this. Okay. So don't maintain, don't maintain any kind of a state when you are processing the records. Don't have static variables also and those stuff. I'll talk about that later. Okay, so now what does it mean? Uh, so you have a map method You have a record. The record is com is is given as an input key and the input value. And record is nothing but uh, one complete line. So if you have a three lines, line one, line two, and line three, then first and the foremost, line goes line one. It converts into key value pair and then your map method will be called then line 2 then line 3 so your map method will be called for 3 map, map, map method will be called 3 times so here in both of these blocks you have a 3 3 records and you will and your map method will be called 3 times and as I've just told you that your map method will be called for every record so when you are writing the logic inside the map method you have to keep only one single record in mind and that single record should be generic enough so that your all the logic should be all the all kinds of records can be handled <coughs> this single record should be generic enough in your mind should be generic so that All kinds of records can be handled. Okay, so the logic uh, should be written in such a way that it can handle all kinds of records. Third, please notice that few records have three words, few records have four words, few records are empty, few records can be have extra special characters and not that so that you should so why I'm saying this because you should write the logic in such a way so that you can handle all those kinds of record. Now let us make an assumption that how a record will be converted to key value pair. So we are making an assumption that a record will be converted to key value pair with the key as a line number and the value as a record. So this particular so there are three records here, three lines, three records. Uh, each one of them are converted key value pair with the key as a line number and the value as a complete line. Key as a line number, value as a complete line. Key as a line number, value as a complete line. Now, as you know that uh, that the records will be input. I mean, call one by one. So, hi, how are you? Will be converted key value pair, and then your map method will be called. Then, I am fine will be called converted to key value pair, and then key, and then uh, your map method will be called. Then hi, how, how are you doing? Then your map will be called. <coughs> so now <coughs> you know that uh, your map is going to be called for 
every record with the key as a line number and the value as line uh, input value as your complete line then what logic should go because you should understand your uh, business problem was to count the number of words which are starting with vowel so your business problem or the problem statement which we are going to solve is count the number of words which are starting with vowels Now you got an input key is a line number, input value is a complete line. So you, uh, I, there is no point in processing or taking into account your line number. So you take a line. So let's say the line is, hello, how are you? This is your line. And you break the input line into individual words and collect them in an array. So if it is a string, I will say, string of array splits is equal to str dot split slash slash w plus which is a regular expression that will break the line into individual words i will collect them in an array so the array will have hello how are you then you iterate over the array elements so i'll say for string word colon this splits if if not word dot is empty if the word is not empty then I will go here if word dot is vowel if it is a vowel then I will say emit output key is my word and the value as one <clears throat> this is something the logic which I will write in Java not the exact not in the same way, but yes uh, It will be kind of a similar Right so Now if this record goes hi, how are you then you will emit r comma one if I am fine is coming if let's say one more r is here Hi, how are you and there is one more r then there is two r comma one you will not try to add them together and say that i will pass r comma two let let it pass you are treating each word as an individual and you are not making sure that whether the same word has appeared or not you don't should not make all those things you have to do all those things you have a different set of uh, uh, different kind of uh, techniques are there which is known as combiner but we'll talk about them later right now whatever word you are saying pass it <clears throat> hi how are you then you go with uh, then the another, another line comes i am fine you will emit i comma one i am comma one uh, how are you doing r comma one right so from these two blocks of data these are the uh, key value pairs uh, which you have emitted you name it as an intermediate key value pair right so these are basically your intermediate key value pairs Now, once the map tasks are over, you know that the output of the map task will be transferred over the network and passed on to the machine reducer task is running. So both the output goes. The very first thing when the um, when the output comes to the mapper, when the output comes to the reducer, uh, intermediate output from the mapper comes to the reducer, you have the grouping or group by key operation. Grouping or group by key operation happens on the reducer you don't have to worry it is done by the framework so grouping of the group by key framework this operation uh, is performed by the framework you don't have to worry okay so grouping or a group by key what does it mean so it will take the same key and the va it will uh, for a given key for the same key the values will be 
uh, aggregated together and forms a list. For a same key, <coughs> values will be combined and forms a list. If you see this output, the output of the grouping operation would be um, here you have same keys R, R, R. Values 1, 1, comma 1. Similarly, for the other key, let's say apple, it will be one, how many apples? One and one, one comma one. <coughs> so this will be the output of the group by key operation, which you don't have to worry, it will be done by the framework. And this, <coughs> this output will be the input to your reduce task or reduce method. So this will be the input to your reduce method. So as map tasks are associated with the map methods, as map tasks are associated with map methods, your reduce tasks are associated with the reduce method or reduce function. And what will be the input to your reduce method? It will be the output of the grouping or the group by key operation. Just now I've explained you the output is of the grouping or the group by key operation is a key and a list of values. So the key and the list of values is the input to your risk method and then you will actually uh, write a developer will write a logic to process this input key and the list of values and generate final output key value pairs. Here uh, so you have this so this is on the reducer machine which I am just showing here. You have a grouping operation results are list of values, I mean key and the list of values and the reduce method is going to be called for each and every key. So if you have five keys here, so the reduce method will be called for every key. And what you need to do is to count it, right? Your, you want your problem statement was count the number of words which are starting with the vowels. You have filtered the words in the mapper, now you are aggregating it. So actually you can write a logic like sum is equal to zero. You iterate over all the words, sum is equal to sum plus val, emit the input key. Whatever the input key is coming, the output key will be the same as the input key. And the, now the output value will be the summation. So if the input key is R and the list of value is coming as 1, 1, 1, then the output key will be equal to the input key which is R and the output value will be equal to summation that is 3 in this case. So R11, one, comma 1, comma 1 goes, output is 3 and similarly for all these things. So that's how you are gonna solve it. That's how your basic problem, that the first basic your word count problem is solved. <laughs> It's pretty simple. Now, in order to solve any map this job, remember that there are only two steps. Any map this job under the sun, henceforth, if you're gonna solve, if you want to solve, it's only a two-step process. First and the foremost, input key, input value, you don't have to worry because that will be given by the framework. So, mapper, if you want to draw a quick diagram. Your map receives input key, input value. You 
टू जनरेट आउटपुट की आउटपुट वैल्यू रिड्यूस इनपुट की इनपुट वैल्यू बिकॉज आउटपुट ऑफ द मैपर विल बिकम द इनपुट टू योर रिड्यूसर एंड देन यू जनरेट आउटपुट की एंड द आउटपुट वैल्यू सो इनपुट की एंड द इनपुट वैल्यू विल बी गिवन बाई द फ्रेमवर्क सो दिस थिंग्स विल बी गिवन बाई द फ्रेमवर्क you don't have the you don't actually you, you will so you will use some kind of input format and you will get a predefined input key value per which you which you are not worried now what's under your control is this output key and the output value so because you actually get any kind of input key and input value you know what kind of output key and output value you want it to solve the problem so first and the foremost you have to actually determine that's a first step you actually determine uh, what is my output key and the output value once you determine the output can output value you actually determine uh, what is the output of your grouping operation because that out what is the output of grouping operation because that is going to determine that what logic will go into the reduce method so you will draw a quick diagram to get the output of grouping operation right because the output of the grouping operation will tell you what logic should go inside the reduce method to get the final to get the desired output it's always two step process here so always first decide the map output key value pet then then draw a quick diagram just like i have shown you the last problem and confirm whether the grouping operation is going to give you the appropriate result or not since the output of the grouping operation is going to decide what logic should go inside the reduce method to get the desired output let us see the inverted indexing problem um, and let us try to solve it logically or the, through uh, whatever we have learned now inverted indexing problem it is used by the uh, google on a daily basis because inverted indexing problem is like uh, you index it beforehand for example you do the indexing done for the keywords so on the back side of the book you actually see a topic name and the page numbers in which that topic name has appeared so why it is faster because you since you have already pre indexed uh, so you just need to do a look up so you don't have to do any processing you have already done the processing and created the index for you created the index for yourself so that the next time you just do the look up now the problem statement here is you have a lot of files let's say a lot of web pages and out of those web pages uh, you have to take out all the words and you need to map the words to the list of the files in which those has appeared okay fine let us uh, what i mean here what do we mean here for example there are two files file a and file b uh, in this file a there are two lines this is cat big fat hen this is dog my dog fat what do we require the output is that we are going to take all the words and we are going to map to the files in which those word has appeared for example the word this if you map it file a and file b so this means that this keyword or this word has appeared in file a and file b is file a and file b cat file a and file b fat file a and file b so if if anyone asks you give me those files where the fat word has appeared so you don't have to do any processing you have already done the processing and created the index 
so you will you will just display this file and file view now let us try to solve this problem as i've told you the first thing you have to decide uh, you can assume there can be n thousand such files are present in a directory and uh, you have to decide the first and the foremost what should be my output key value pair now you understand you always keep this diagram in your mind that you have the block of data a lot of lines are here you actually uh, it will be cut so it's nothing but that's a record each record gets converted to key value pair that is your one one line gets converted to key value pair input key and the input value uh, you can make the same assumption which i made it that your input key is a line number and the input value is a complete line <clears throat> and then it goes into the map method and you write some logic to generate the output key and the output value why i am asking what should be your output key and the output value so your problem statement is for a given word in how many files it has appeared in right so what does it make sense to give you an output key uh, what should be output key and output value so we can make output key as a word and the output value as a file name <coughs> and if we make it let us see whether it gives us the desired result or not so the second step the first step you have done it the second step is to draw a quick diagram to understand what will be the output of grouping operation so there is a keyword by name this you can appear in file one so this is your output key and the output value is file one this can appear in file one twice this can appear in file two also so this file one is file one so just some couple of key value pairs we have omitted <coughs> and then we have passed to the reducer machine let us see the output of grouping operation so you have a word and all the va and the values consist of all the file names and that's what you wanted right and that means the out if i choose this key value pair then i will be able to solve the problem so now if, if this goes to the reduce method then you can i then you can easily remove the duplicates if you want to so actually you wanted this in a given the given word how many files it has appeared so it makes sense to give this key value pairs as a output key of the mapper to uh, output key will be the word and the output will be the file name so that makes sense and it solves our problem and this is your final output right now let us say average word length problem so average word length of a character so for example uh, there is a one problem statement wherein you wanted to find out uh, given a corpus corpus is nothing but uh, a collection of documents in a text mining terminology given a corpus determine the average word length of a character which means that given a character the output will tell you that if you start if you start a word with a character how many alphabets will have that word if you want to start a word with a character how many alphabets can have in that character or in that word how many letters valid letters it can have in that word so that's uh, most of the problems right you remember um, you start typing the word a w and then it starts giving you the intelligence you starts what i could write a b then it gives you intelligence like it could be a bait it could be a bet it could be a bands right those words it can it displays you that's your average word length problem okay <clears throat> so what is that average in the word length problem for example it says that um, if this is your one line let's say i'll take with one line 
and the, uh, if you want to find out the average word length of character so it has two parts to it one is a numerator and denominator the numerator says that um, it's a um, uh, the average word length of any character ch is sum of the length of the character sum of the length of the word starting with that character divided by total number of words starting with that character okay so what does it mean if you want to find out given this line only and if you want to find out what is my average word length of this character capital h from this line only <coughs> so <coughs> i have three words here which are starting with h the numerator says that <coughs> sum of the length of the word <coughs> excuse me sum of the length of the words so here you have three the sum of the length length of the word the length of this word hey is 3 the length of the word of how is 3 the length of the word is 5 sum their sum 3 plus 3 plus 5 divided by total number of words 1 2 and 3 so that's your average word length of character of capital H similarly if I want to calculate what is the average word length of capital small t so what is the length of this I have only one word so the denominator becomes 1 what is the length of this word this is 5 so from this line you have the average word length of each and every character of h is 3.66 t is 5 likewise <coughs> assuming now we have actually started with one line now we are taking we have a lot of documents and i want to do the same so the first thing um, what should be my output key and the output value to solve this problem? Remember, I need the numerator as a length and the denominator as total count. So, what should be my output key from the mapper? Again, the same diagram should be in your mind. So, my output key can be the first character of the word and the output value is the length of the word. For example, if I am considering hello word, then output key would be the H and the value would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. If I'm considering some word like about, then it would be A, comma, 5. <coughs> now draw a quick diagram to figure it out whether output of grouping operation is going to give you or not. So I have taken few key value pairs, H3, H1, A5, A2, some words and their length <coughs> their first character and their length then output of grouping operation is this so the list of the values is the length of the words so this list of the values the list is list is the length of the words which is basically your numerator right so now so what logic should go now it's very much clear I have the numerator uh, wherein I can just do the summation and I can also have a counter to actually count the number of occurrences that will give me the denominator which is the total length total number of times right something like this so in the reduce method I can have a logic like key and list I can have a sum counter sum is equal to 0 counter is equal to 0 I can iterate over the list for integer x colon list sum is equal to sum plus x counter plus plus that is I have okay and then once the iteration is done your average becomes sum by count so I know if I have this grouping operation I can easily find out my uh, average so having a word and the I'm very much sorry but here I think it has got changed this is yep. because this should be the words I mean to say the first character of the word and the length 
let me quickly change this before I make any mistakes. Okay, quickly let me do it. Right. Okay, so that's actually completes our uh, macros framework. Uh, in the couple of modules, we in the later we will see that how does the macros job gets executed on the YARN framework. Yes. Okay, so that's all for today, guys. And yeah. in the next class, we'll uh, see the capacity scheduler.